outside. The major question remains whether life forms should be subject to patents at all. Patenting living organisms is, is, sort of, is settled case law here in the United States, um, and I do it for my clients every day. This allows companies like Monsanto to take up a key position in supplying vital resources, involving the control and manufacture of food products. Now they are setting their sights on the pig, which hasn't even been genetically engineered yet. It's a very broad patent that would grant, if, if it's accepted worldwide, would grant Monsanto control of a significant percentage of all the pigs in the world. And here's what's so critical. The patent isn't just for the pigs. It's for the pigs' offspring. So Mother Nature works for Monsanto's profit. Every time pigs naturally reproduce, that is a violation of the patent that you would have to pay Monsanto for. In the Betzelberger stall in Swabia, Christoph Zimmer wants to obtain further DNA samples. In Europe, as well as in the United States, patents are not only being granted today for genetically engineered organisms, but also for naturally occurring animals, for example, lab animals. Every piglet in whose DNA inspectors find fattening gene markers could then be subject to licensing fees. How many of them are already affected? If there are too many, Zimmer says, the Betzelbergers might as well close down operations. A few pig bristles for the good cause. The farmers have never spared a thought for DNA structures. For decades, they simply crossbred according to appearance. Now, Christoph Zimmer only needs to find a lab willing to do the test. Not an easy task because even conducting this test infringes on patents owned by the American company. At the laboratory, it's best to remain anonymous, because biotech companies like Monsanto have often sued for patent violations. This is big business. The worldwide market for pork is estimated at several billion euros. For Farmer Zimmer and his colleagues, a lot is riding on the test results. One of the most under-publicized actions of Monsanto with its patents is its persecution of American farmers. We have just completed a study that shows that they have threatened thousands of American farmers with lawsuits for violating their patents. That over 129 lawsuits have been filed by Monsanto against American farmers and they have reaped millions of dollars. And this is Monsanto coming in with its huge legal team, all of its power coming after a small farmer in South Dakota or Nebraska or in Indiana trespassing on their land, making up, in many cases, making up uh, uh, you know, lies about what these farmers were doing and not doing, persecuting them, and often driving them out of business. Uh, we have documented this. If this is what Monsanto will do to these farmers, imagine what they'll do to the farmers around the world. If this is what they're doing with their patents on crops, imagine what they'll do to, to farmers when they've patented the animals of the world as well. Ruined and convicted. Percy Schmeiser was sued by Monsanto for patent infringements worth several million dollars. Reports that products with utterly unknown protein compounds were allowed to enter the food chain. Monsanto introduced the first genetically modified hormone for animals, bovine growth hormone. And what we know now is that the research appeared to be rigged to avoid finding problems. When they wanted to show that the hormone did not interfere with fertility in cows, they allegedly added cows to the study that were pregnant prior to injection. Other researchers pasteurized the milk 120 times longer than normal to try and destroy the hormone. The introduction of a hormone to boost milk production in cows shows the kind of massive pressure exerted to launch new products on the market, 
In Washington, Jeffrey Smith meets with a former inspector at the FDA, Richard Burroughs. The man is a true patriot with children serving in the U.S. Army. Nevertheless, he refused to license the genetic product because the examiners found the test strips from Monsanto insufficient and demanded new ones. I mean, they could have come in and argued the science of it at a higher level and gotten it taken care of. But for some reason, since I guess I was the obstacle that had asked them to do these extra studies, which were not completed to my satisfaction, it was easier to get rid of me than it was to do the studies, and a whole lot cheaper. So somewhere in the chain of command, they made this point, and that person listened to the money and the politics and uh, agreed that the best way was to get rid of me and uh, keep the product. That was how they finally got me out of the end stages of the review process. They finally said, well, you're no longer competent to do your job. You're, you're fired. Obstacles are placed in the path of the press as well. Popular reporter Jane Acri researched for Fox News the side effects of the bovine growth hormone, such as udder infections and pus residues in the milk. We found that uh, there is a difference in the milk. Monsanto says there isn't, but there is. Their own studies show that the milk has a higher spin-off hormone called IGF-1, which is a very potent growth hormone. It's found in, in mother's milk. It helps babies grow. It also helps cancer cells grow. It helps all cells grow. On the Friday before the Monday air date, it was going to air on the 6 o'clock news. It was a five-part series called The Mystery in Your Milk. Uh, Monsanto sent uh, the first of two very strongly worded letters that said, stop the reports, your reporters are idiots, their sources are incompetent. And, and a week later they sent a second letter from a New York lawyer that said that there would be dire consequences for Fox News if the story airs. The reporter is called off the story. Her superiors decide that the report first has to be revised by the Fox News lawyers and Monsanto. The lawyers would say, you know, say what Monsanto says, it doesn't matter what you found, put in this, don't wor use the word cancer. What ended up being a, uh, a re-review process went into eight months and 83 different versions of this story, which is unheard of, nobody does that. The end result of this eight months of re-editing the piece was that they fired us at the first window in our contract. The hormone is still on the market in the United States, and pigs all over the world are today fed primarily feed made from genetically modified plants. Trucks with genetically engineered soy meal are on the roads around the clock, like here in the port of Fredericia in Denmark. Per Digge imports the animal feed from Argentina. He has now been sued for patent violations by Monsanto. In Argentina, the biotech giant introduced its genetically modified plant on a grand scale, according to its familiar pattern. But it was unable to obtain a patent or demand licensing fees there. Since the company does have a patent in Europe, however, it wants to collect the fees here after the fact. The Danish importers are appalled and refuse to pay. They see themselves as a pawn in an economic power struggle. Argentinian patent law does not allow for the patenting of genetically engineered organisms. And the country has so far managed to stand up to the political pressure coming from North America. At have GMO-free production in Denmark is not possible today. We can use examples from Sweden, Norway, Finland, where they have GMO-free production. In Sweden production, they have big problems in these countries. Det skyldes primært, at øh, den merpris, man skal betale for at få GMO-fri søjer, er steget år efter år. Det går kun en retning, og det skyldes igen, at den GMO-fri søjerproduktion i Sydamerika og Nordamerika øh, udgør efterhånden så lille en del af den samlede produktion. Så mulighederne for at øh, få den GMO-fri vare ud til en fornuftig pris øh, bliver ringere og ringere. Uh, omkostning til sporbarheds sikkerhedsstillelse sikker og, og lignende stiger simpelthen voldsomt. The Danish importer knows that the penetration of whole regions with genetically modified feed is irreversible. Proving that pig feed is biologically pure is virtually impossible to finance. And the fear remains that to top it all off, they could lose the lawsuit against Monsanto. 
on the way to the slaughterhouse, pumped full of genetically modified feed. The meat doesn't even have to be labeled as such when it comes onto the market. The long-term consequences for the consumer remain to be seen. But Monsanto's intention is clear, a patent on pig genes. And what's next after that? Will any risk be avoided in the future? Monsanto and some of these companies have something very different in mind. They don't want to change their technology to fit life. They want to alter life so it fits their technology and their profit. Yeah, maybe you can uh, genetically engineer the pig to, uh, uh, to be better if they use the genetically engineered products and, and you just have an inline monopoly on this. Yeah, sure, that, that can happen. These pigs should not be forced to eat genetically modified feed, nor should their offspring later be genetically engineered. Jetzt wir schauen jetzt bei der Luise, das ist eine unserer ältesten Tiere hier mit einer ganzen Herde Ferkel und bei der wollen wir uns auch mal schauen, ob an diesem alt angestammten schwäbisch-hälischen Schwein aus einer alten Linie auch diese Gene mit drin vorkommen. So, einmal, zweimal. Christoph Zimmer dares to test his own pigs. He has hesitated for a long time to test them for the gene marker for which Monsanto is claiming a patent. Monsanto is not alone. In laboratories around the world, the race is on for patented pig DNA. Thanks to the help from the Chinese, the Danish have already made a great deal of progress, as have the Germans. If a company succeeds at exercising near total control over pig breeding, thanks to a wide-ranging patent, it could legally begin to genetically engineer the animals as well, something that Monsanto has already done with plants. A nightmare for nature conservationists, a lucrative vision for industry. Man kann sich durchaus vorstellen, dass man analog zur Pflanzenbiotechnologie auch äh, für die tierische Produktion eben fremde Gene in, in äh, Tiere einschleust. A way to simply correct small flaws of nature in order to boost production. And the result? The super pig. Ich glaube nicht, dass es das Superschwein geben wird. Es wird möglicherweise mehrere Superschweine geben, die eben entsprechend den jeweiligen Produktionsbedingungen und auch den Anforderungen der Märkte ähm, optimal produzieren können. If there only weren't that annoying problem of the declining birth rate among pigs and cattle. Genetic scientist Wolf, who doesn't believe the culprit can be genetically modified feed, has launched a new experiment with cows. Die Kiki trägt ein zusätzliches Gen, das ursprünglich aus einer Qualle kommt. Dieses Gen kodiert für ein grün fluoreszierendes Protein oder abgekürzt GFP. Wenn wir sie jetzt bei Dunkelheit mit blauem Licht anleuchten würden, wird sie tatsächlich eine grüne Schnauze haben. Für uns ist die Kiki deswegen interessant, weil wir für, von ihr Embryonen erzeugen können, die ebenfalls grün fluoreszieren. Und diese Embryonen können wir dann in einem sehr frühen Stadium im weiblichen Geschlechtstrakt lokalisieren und können so Wechselwirkungen zwischen dem Embryo und dem Muttertier sehr gut äh, untersuchen. In the USA, environmental activist Jeffrey Smith has heard about another experiment. He therefore pays another visit to Jerry Roseman, the ruined pig farmer. Roseman is disappointed with himself and with the fact that he believed the promises of the genetically modified feed producers. I tried to do the right thing. You know, I was, I was one of the technology people. You know, I was right on the cutting edge of everything for the farm, you know, because this is what we were told to do. And ultimately, you know, they lied to us. We were told that these products were safe when we were handed them to us. And ultimately, I found out that there's virtually no testing. And anyone that comes up with any kind of a problem whatsoever with it, there's absolutely no cooperation other than to bury them in paper and make them go away. Now Roseman is doing the tests himself without outside help. He has been able to squirrel away some of the genetically modified corn which he is now occasionally feeding to a few cattle. And these animals four years ago were sterile. We got them off of the corn, got them on green grass, and they were reproduced fine. This last winter I went ahead and started the experiment again and fed them the, the problematic corn here. And at the present time these four, three cows are barren and the bull is basically sterile. And that was after feeding the corn to them for approximately 90 days. 
and here next week we'll take them back off of the corn and eventually the, the bull will come back to being viral and the cows most likely will, will conceive a calf for next year.